This video is somewhat dedicated to my mechanic, but it's also made for the bunch of us passionate about one single brand. I myself grew up with these cars, therefore the choice was clear when I was planning to live in one for a while. I spent a huge part of my 20s behind the wheel of a discovery. Not really to discover anything, but to learn. To begin with, I set out to learn photography. But getting hooked on the concept of traveling this way, I couldn't really find a good reason to stop. And even though living in a car in Norway can be challenging, you will also be met with beauty around every corner. And I guess my mechanic knows how well I enjoy traveling without cause. Because this is Mats. And this Defender belongs to a guy in Croatia that has never even driven it. Mats has a small indie garage called LPM Classic that doesn't only fix cars, he also restores and sells them. This one was bought, but the customer in Zagreb didn't get to car due to problems with transportation. And with the year coming to an end, I was asked if I wanted to join the drive all the way down there. I'm not really picky about what I call an adventure. If it's a new experience for me, I'm most likely down for it. Even though it's a 2000 km drive through six different countries just to deliver a car. And with a short amount of time on our hands, it wouldn't really be enjoyable either. Mostly highways through Europe, with a car built for anything but the highways. My first shift of driving got us to Germany, where I had to give in and get some rest in the back seat. On highways, the cabin is so noisy that I didn't wake up before the car became silent. The lack of sound was, eventually, because something was wrong. At least we thought so for a while. Low boost pressure didn't allow us to keep up with traffic. Through the country with the highest legal speed limits in the world. Turned out to be either an air tube caving in on itself or the turbo actuator. With the Land Rover dealer in Leipzig, we changed directions to see if it was possible to sort it out before reaching the Alps. They kindly helped us out with the new silicon hose, but sadly, the issue laid with the other part. This didn't really qualify as a breakdown, only a break. Because apart from slowing us down to 95, it didn't really matter. With progress slowed down, we didn't take any detours around the Alps and plowed through Austria, Slovenia and into Croatia late at night. Stumbling into a hotel and met with a reminder that Christmas was just around the corner. And truth be told, we didn't even have plane tickets back yet, because we didn't know at what time we would arrive. The next day was the final one with the grey pickup. We called the buyer and met him at this garage outside the capital. His name is Dario, and he actually grew up here. This house is where he and his dad used to fix Range Rovers when he was younger. And as years flew by, he kept on working on them. Hence the backyard, full of projects. Dario had never owned the Defender before this one, 
He spent most of his time at the other end of the spectrum, the more sophisticated part of the brand. But as many others, he always thought about getting a Defender, the workhorse in the family. Neither of us had ever been to the Balkans, let alone driven all the way down there. So after Dario laughed at the ridiculous drive he did through Europe just to deliver his car, he invited us to a local food experience in the center of Zagreb. The fact that it was only a few days left before Christmas Eve was obvious. Grasping the chance, he showed us around the city, giving us the most wholesome and low-key guide experience I've had to this day. A scene so far off from my usual lifestyle, but yet so enjoyable. But good things comes to an end, and eventually, we had to say both good night and goodbye. And in the blink of an eye, I was back at it, aiming to spend the days between Christmas and New Year's at the West Coast. After crossing the highlands dividing east from west, it doesn't look inviting at all when the scenes are both cold and grey. But I think that makes us Norwegians so much more grateful for the summer days. A grand bonus during the off-season for travelers here is how few people you'll find around campgrounds. In a small place called Odda, there is a campground in the middle of town. And it was completely deserted the night I spent there. That resulted in a few showers and some time to work without any interruptions. But I didn't really camp here for that reason. It was mostly to wait for the stores to open up again after Christmas closure. I always spend Christmas with family, but the last few years I've gone on some sort of trip the following days. Most people spend some time to relax during the season, which is why most places look weirdly empty. After filling up the car with food and drinks, I set out to do what I initially traveled there for. Because it wasn't just to be by myself. The morning after Christmas, I stopped by the company I work for to pick up my cameras. I was heading for the Highlands as the first mission, with the goal to sleep up there in the freezing weather. Because before driving to Croatia, Mats and I changed the glow plugs on my Discovery, mainly because I had some issues starting up when it was cold. And the only way to test if everything is truly back to normal is to park somewhere cold overnight and start it up again the next morning. The highlands are unforgiving throughout the winter, but also beautiful to the right person. One of those places where you're just there as a spectator, immensely small and delicate compared to everything around you.
The roads going between east and west have always been there. They worked as old shipping routes between towns, where horse carriages transported goods. They've been used so much that old settlements have popped up along these routes, and some signs of that are still left to this day. Even now, the highest parts of these roads are extremely harsh, and even more back in the days. Norway used to be a poor country where a lot of people outside towns relied on everything they could either grow or trade. And the harsher the place was, the cheaper it would be to own the land. This is to some extent true to this day, at least about the prices. Not a unknown phenomenon, but with people moving away from smaller towns and into bigger cities, some of these small houses become unsought after. Even though they're often placed in unbelievable landscapes. And maybe that's why with my lifestyle, I thought about reconditioning and owning a small house, wedged between some mountains one day. The second reason why I escaped the capital after Christmas was to meet up with fellow photographer Ruben. We got to know each other a couple of years ago through Instagram, and with similar interest we kept on meeting from time to time. We drove through snow-covered landscapes and into a part of the west coast that I hadn't explored before. And we was rewarded with more snow than usual when we got there. And a bit too much snow for some people's liking. After helping out some random people in a ditch, we headed towards the mountains again, and there's one particular road that we wanted to drive on. Firstly, crossing one summit before getting closer to the actual road. But upon arrival, we met a lot more snow than what we initially hoped for. A random guy there was also planning to head up, so together we removed the pile block in the entrance. So we tagged along on this road that leads to a dam construction higher up in the mountains. But since we were waiting for a third car to come camp with us that night, we had even less ground clearance. We had to give up on this mountain road when the snow just kept on getting deeper. And it was actually so deep that it was hard to find a decent place to set up camp. But after a full day on the road, we finally found a place to settle down for the night. This is the second video, or vlog if you may, that I've made. Both without any plan or without taking the time to get more spectacular shots. 
and I've been deeply humbled by the response I've been getting so far. This is also the final thing that I made in 2022. So my goal for this year is to put a lot more time, effort and money into making these videos. 